I don't think I'll be into that tonight, but yeah, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The weather has been warm, even yeah. with the rain, and yeah. it would have been better. Uh, but good to cover. Uh, but I if somebody is going up, you can say, assuming they're not turning out, you can go up. I would think, yeah, even if we have good weather. They need to be happy like a week out there. Yeah, we're yeah. yeah. talking about whether that can work. Yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, but it was a good first time. And string being was playing in the bar at Pro Bowl. He said, It might have been one song. I said, It's going to be one song. <laughs> because he was ran that. And there ain't that one song more than I would have expected. <laughs> right. I'm going to Okay. Yeah. Anita, do you know Ariana? Um, I've seen your name, but I've never met you. Cinema. It's nice to be in Anita. And also Evergreen. Oh, you guys want to hear me? No. Oh, I am. Yeah. No, I'm glad to be with We're up in New York. We're in the hood. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great new piece. You know, one sweet story was uh, a couple female came and said, we not only had fun in the rain, we went out to breakfast with neighbors who we never want to cut any of us. So that's fun. Yeah, but that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the idea. Where are four places to live? I was a real one. Yeah, we have friends, close friends. Apparently, you're going to be missing two people over there that we've shown. I just made aware of it. Our street. We'll get done reasonably, very reasonable. We're on the first spot. Okay. Call Sarah. Yeah, 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 Sarah. Yeah
He was back there for a couple months. And then he was back out. My wife called me. Hey, Dylan. How are you? Good, thanks. Definitely moved after we put the stuff on the party. Then a couple days later, I answered the phone. He was on Ocean Avenue. How are you? Yeah. You see my email. A menu? Yeah. A menu? Yeah. No, I haven't seen a menu yet. I'm sure that's coming. <laughs> They're pretty excited. So. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Oh, it is. No, uh, yeah, no, they were pretty excited. <laughs> As anytime you go on their website, it says coming soon, are we? No. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I guess you came to visit me today. Oh, I'm nervous, but I told her there. I'm like, what can I do? They're like, nothing. I'm like, I'm sure I have to. <laughs> she's allowed to, she's going to film me. She's going to film me. There's something we could do. Yeah. Well, she's not, she's not here. She's, I, 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 yeah, she's not crying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but luckily, uh, um, Terry said something. <laughs> No, no. I was not going to do it right up front. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can do it. You want me to do it up front? Yeah, so I think because he's on this, video, yeah, he's taking that down. He's taking, that down. He's taking, that down. He's taking the time to be on this meeting, so I might as well do it up front. That's right. Yeah. 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 
mention two things. Uh, first, uh, we were, for those who haven't heard, um, we were saddened to hear that on Monday, uh, Paul and Shamson's wife, Ruth, passed away. Um, we were very sad to hear that. I see, I think Paul is on, is he on the screen? Yeah, I think yeah, I saw yeah. So Paul, uh, I very much appreciate you being on. Uh, I recognize it's a, it's a tough time for the family and yourself. So uh, our condolences uh, as a community. Uh, Paul is been a, a leader in our community in the area of the historical society and other things. And um, I know he's had a uh, a challenging few years um, with family medical issues. So um, uh, we're sad to hear this, but uh, hopefully uh, you and your family will, will get through this tough time. So uh, uh, our condolences as a community. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is just um, that it is, uh, this week is Passover and I wanted to uh, extend my uh, wishes to those who are celebrating that, uh, particularly um, the context of um, Passover this year is probably particularly uh, poignant for uh, people that celebrate that, uh, given the um, current world situation. So uh, hopefully um, uh, our Jewish population here in town um, is um, going through that uh, particularly going through this holiday um, with that in mind. So uh, those are two things I just wanted to cover early in the meetings. Um, so um, as I have covered, I, I think every meeting for the last year or so, plus actually coming up by a year and a half, uh, I have and will continue to emphasize that um, in these meetings, uh, we really have an expectation that we should welcome disagreement because it helps us think things through from a different perspective. Our voice should be a constructive one. Uh, I think we all want a brighter Bradley Beach, continuing improved Bradley Beach. So I'd ask everybody to gauge their tone going forward um, as 
we all know we're all neighbors. Now, having said that, I've said it and I've said it and I've said it many times, but uh, I think in many cases, this has fallen on deaf ears. Um, we made an attempt at managing our council meetings more effectively in 2024. We had some success in January and February. Uh, then we kind of went off the rails again. So we need to get back to an improved um, state of how we conduct these meetings. Uh, one of our, dep our deputy clerk did an analysis for us and um, the average council meeting in Monmouth County this year, um, excluding Bradley Beach is about an hour and 20 minutes. Our meetings have been averaging three hours and 30 minutes. There's only two towns besides us that um, come near three hours. Uh, over 75% of the towns in, uh, which is 42 towns, um, are under two hours. So I think we can do better. So we're gonna try to really conform to the agenda. Uh, I'm gonna bring forward some changes. Um, we have a workshop scheduled for May. Um, but we're really going to try to conform to what the agenda says and how we um, conduct ourselves in the meetings. Um, so we're we're looking forward to that workshop coming up in um, in May. So with that, uh, we'll go to workshops, which we have none. Um, we do have um, <clears throat> under present number six on the agenda presentations and bids. We have. Um, four uh, proclamations to cover tonight. Um, all are very appropriate. And I will start with um, the National Volunteer Week proclamation. Um, do we have any volunteers in the, in the uh, audience? If you're a volunteer, could you stand up, please? Uh, strategic planning people, hello. It's about everybody in the room. Well, that's my point. So uh, there is a point here. So um, we have, oh, that's not the right one. Sorry. Uh, I want to make um, I just comment on this proclamation. Um, it's National Volunteer Week 2024. <clears throat> Where at National Volunteer Week, enacted in 1974 by President Richard Nixon, celebrates the spirit of volunteerism, urging all Americans to seek opportunities to provide service to their community. And whereas the borough of Bradley Beach is fortunate to have dedicated volunteers who generously give their time, energy, and talents to help make our community a better place. And whereas the work of these volunteers contributes to the quality of life in the borough in countless ways. And whereas these volunteers serve on a variety of boards, commissions, committees, and extends to include many nonprofit organizations, whereas volunteers also share their time to help with various borough sponsored events, and whereas volunteering changes the lives of volunteers in a positive way, increasing self confidence, self esteem, and physical well being, offering the chance to make a new connection and make new connections and provide opportunities to learn new skills and abilities. Whereas the Borough of Bradley Beach recognizes that volunteering improves the quality of life and increases community participation and ownership. Volunteers are vital to our future as a desirable, caring, productive town. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the governing body of the Borough of Bradley Beach does hereby recognize the week of April 21st to 27th as National Volunteer Week and expressing gratitude to all local volunteers for their tireless dedication and service to the community. So, thank you all. Thank you. For those volunteers that are celebrating Passover and are here tonight, we certainly thank them too. Our second is um, Administrative Professionals Day. Uh, hey, Michelle, could you come in here? Thank you for Happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Michelle Wiley, she worked 16 hours today and we're not done. <laughs> Whereas administrative professionals, including administrative assistants, office assistants, receptionists, building clerks, finance specialists, deputy clerks. Uh, and other administrative support staff makes up some of the largest segments of the labor force in America. And whereas administrative professionals 
play an essential role in coordinating the office operations of business, government agencies, educational institutions, and other organizations. And whereas the work of administrative professionals today requires advanced knowledge and expertise in communications, computer software, office technology, project management, organization, customer service, and other vital office managerial responsibilities, whereas the Administrative Professionals Day is observed annually in workplaces around the world to recognize the important contributions of administrative staff, and whereas we recognize the importance of contributions of highly skilled administrative professionals to the success of office operations, now therefore be resolved the governing body of the Borough of Bradley Beach do hereby recognize April 24th as Administrative Professionals Day, and do hereby recognize and appreciate these administrative professionals and their valuable contributions in the workplace and support their continued professional growth. Thank you. Yeah, there was Monday. Monday. 28 years here. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Next one. Eric, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Office of Professional Against the Clerk. The time honored and vital part of local government exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, Ooh. and the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides a professional link between the citizens, the local governing body, and agencies of government at all levels, and whereas the Professional Municipal Clerk I pledge to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service for all. And whereas the professional municipal clerks serve as the information center on functions of local government and community, whereas professional professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of professional municipal clerk throughout the participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state and provincial county and international professional organizations, whereas it is most appropriate, I would recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, we are resolved governing body of Borough of Bradley Beach. We recognize the week of May 5th through, oh, through, next week, through May 11th as Professional Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to all professional municipal clerks for the vital service they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. So thank you very much. Okay, our last um, proclamation is uh, Borough Bradley Beach Proclamation of National Military Appreciation Month. Anybody who's in the military or in the military now or was at one time stand up? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Whereas, so, a couple times ago, in 1999, Senator John McCain introduced legislation to designate the month of May as National Military Appreciation Month, and both the Senate and House Representatives adopted resolutions calling for Americans to recognize and honor U.S. service members. And whereas National Military Appreciation Month, NMAM, is celebrated every May and is a declaration that encourages U.S. citizens to observe the month as a uh, symbol of unity, and whereas NMAM honors the current and former members of the U.S. Armed Forces, including those who have died in the pursuit of freedom, and whereas the month of May is characterized by six national observances which highlight the contributions of those who serve. They are Loyal Today, which is May 1st, Public Service Recognition, which is May 3rd to May 9th, Victory Day in Europe, aka VE Day on May 8th, Armed Forces Day on May 16th, and Memorial Day on May 25th. Now, therefore, be resolved the governing body of the Borough of Bradley Beach to hereby proclaim the month of May as National Military Appreciation Month and encourage all citizens to recognize the services of all current and former military personnel and take part in all national services. Thank you all. For those who don't know, uh, Bill uh, Shuck really is a contributor um, in this area in that he helps us uh, on Veterans Day and Memorial Day um, really uh, bring forward um, very deserving either veterans or uh, other military to, to be the honorees of those particular events. And that's not easy work. 
uh, in a small town. So we appreciate that very much. Okay, um, we'll now move to approval of minutes. Um, we have, uh, make a motion to approve the April 10th, 2024 co council business mini meeting minutes. Second. Mr. Noble, absent. Mr. Gubitosi, absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Um, okay, I will now go to the minutes for April 10th executive session, make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Mr. Noble, absent. Mr. Gubitosi, absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Okay, uh, public comments pertaining, pertaining to the 424 agenda, items only, um, five minute limit, single instance per participant. Are there any questions on the agenda tonight? Yes. Um, just the agenda or the... Uh... Consent, uh, as well as the consent agenda? Yeah. Anything on the agenda? Anything on the agenda. All right, so... Uh, in reference to uh, resolution 2024-101, uh, looking at it, I'm just wondering why 714 Main Street is not listed. They have a, a tree well over there on the corner, but yet it wasn't mentioned to place a tree there. Which address was, sorry? 714 Main Street. Yeah, was a tree there originally that they cut down or whoever cut it down and so it was just a hole. My understanding is this is not every empty tree well on Main Street. We're doing just taking a handful and doing the ones that we can. Um, so I don't have an answer besides that. I mean, I don't think we were trying to, you know, do every single one. Um that's you know, okay. doesn't mean we're not going to get to that, but um, this, and again, this is just replacing trees that already existed on Main Street. It's not new trees. They, they probably should have been replaced a long time ago, but um, we're getting to it now. What's the, what, what is the business at 714 in front of? That's a uh, uh, Bradley Beach group. Okay. And, and I've actually spoken to them and they would like a tree. So that's a bummer that they're not on this list, but that's, a, that's fine. Yeah. The other one may take a little labor. Which is I'm a little upset on that one. Uh, 301 Main Street, Geo Models. They used to have trees there. And I don't see a tree there. And if I'm not mistaken, the original site plan, when they came for the planning board, they had trees on Main Street and on the side street. Now, looking into it, there is a note on their plans, the note G. The contractor to maintain and preserve all existing trees and replace if anyone were damaged. Well, there's no trees there. So that was great. It's a great observation. Do you know if there's tree wells there? There used to be. No, I think they repaid the whole. Uh, they my, redid my recollection is they repaid it. Yeah, when they did the building, because everything was torn up. So that's something that you might want to follow. follow the, Thank you. Yes. I'm Regina Breyer, so it's kind of me add. Um, I just wanted to urge the council to not pass the introduction of the budget um, for all the same reasons I always explain. I think we're at a time that there is very little trust in the numbers for being given. I think the 2022 audit has shown enough proof of too many questions we have. Um, I would like to see a 2023 budget uh, audit or we even entertain a 2024 budget. Um, I also know that many residents, including myself, have reached out to other entities, DCA, Comptroller's Office. Um, and if we don't pass the introduction, within a certain time, I believe is when they step in. And I think they'd be more concerned about not getting a 2024 budget moving forward quicker than them wanting to step in here for all the complaints we've had, because we haven't gotten much response. Um, I did receive an email back, I received a phone call back, but it's a lot of the same boilerplate answers. So 
to get them in here promptly, I think it's really important that we don't pass this so they could start getting their hands on all of our finances. So please do not pass the inspection. Thank you. Yes. Um, Julian Chadley, 605 North Avenue. Um, qu quick qu a question. You want an introduction to the uh, budget today. So my question to you, Mr. Mayor, have you given council the ability to talk to the CFO to answer their questions yet that this, they requested at this, the last meeting? Uh, this is this is agenda comments. You but, have I, comment? but you but it's to the introduction to the budget. Yep. So so if you did you give council the ability to talk to our C CFO, Mr. Garts, if they requested at the last meeting in order uh, for said, them to vote. In order to public comments to pertaining to the agenda, and that's the agenda because of the fact that you. So you make so you want to make a public comment. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, 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 point of order, Mr. Mayor. Before we started this set, you said, "Does anybody have questions question. about the agenda?" Yeah. You literally said the word. Does anybody have questions question. about the agenda? My, my mistake. Well, I'm okay. sorry. It's totally but, legit. But, we take questions all the time. But, but, but Mr. Mayor, you've set a precedent where you answer questions and you just take comments. I also so, just said. So the, I, so I also the just said that um, the question and comments, sir. It's my time to speak. Okay, let's you okay. said to gauge your tone. So please take your own advice. I, that I am you. gauging my tone. That I'm, I'm trying to respond to you is to say that what I said at the beginning of the meeting was we are going to try to conform to the agenda. The agenda says it's comments on the agenda. But if, so please but make your comments. Thing, okay, I then, welcome you to. Then, then I am urging the council not to pass the introduction to the budget because the mayor is not being transparent. And we still do not know if questions have been answered um, by uh, council that they had questions of. So due to a lack of transparency <clears throat> by Mr. Mayor and his administration, I urge you not to pass the budget. And then also I have uh, comments about um, the uh, resolutions for waiving fees for events um, in Riley Park. We have BBCA, Farmer's Market, um, and I'm concerned about why are we um, going to wait fees for anybody who uses public property. At the end of the day, um, I don't think any organization should be waived fees whatsoever because the taxpayers always wind up um, footing the bill. Um, to say that they are going to clean up and set up, that's wonderful. But at the end of the day, DPW still has to pick up the trash, take the trash to the dump so there are... are uh, trucks that are used, our gas is used, our time is used, and also um, you know, the event of police officers as well. Um, do we bring on additional staff just for the fact that we do have an event going on in town? So there's always a cost to the taxpayer. And we as taxpayers, due to the increased spending and also from the 2022 audit that we still have a million dollars missing, um, which is a debacle, um, I urge you not to um, approve anything with um, the resolutions for events until, and, and honestly, just till they get ironed out, that's 2024-98, 2024-99, and also 2024-100. Uh, um, so um, if we could table that and have a workshop, because I, I love the events, but I don't want them at the expense of the taxpayers. And also, the mayor's always touting his experience at J&J, &J, and you would not pass a budget, nor would you have an operational practice without vetting all the nuances to cost of the town any money. So as a business professional, I would like us to table that and workshop it to make sure the fact that we are not going to be footing the bill because the taxpayers are always footing the bill. Thank you. Julie. Thank you. Yes. Resolution number 100, that coincides with the ordinance that we introduced last week um, for facility facilities. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's got nothing to do with special events. Okay. Okay. Event. But I just want to make sure that we're vetted for any fees or services and everything that it's always in the ordinances. Okay. No. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Paul Adams, uh, 106 Evergreen. We are super excited about our events for the BBCA this year, and it is based on a lot of feedback from members and residents. At the direction of the council, as well as our own um, interpretation, we are indeed fulfilling the ordinance. As you know, we have filed applications for eight events with a $25 application fee. 
we indeed will set up and clean up as well as bring our own tables and chairs. We do indeed commit and we put in writing to the council that we will pay for any expenses. We're just asking for the waiver of the $2,500 deposit. And again, I know you know this, but our mission is indeed to bring our businesses, residents, nonprofits, and the municipality together as a collaborative partnership to strengthen our businesses, to engage our residents, and build a better community. So we're doing that every day, trying our best, but these events are part of that. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Yes. Nancy Meadow, Ocean Park Condominiums. I want to underscore the previous comments from um, Ms. McGuire and Ms. Natalis. Um, I support those comments 110%. I would add to it, as I said last meeting, 2024 95 and 96 passed. We need to get a deposit. You can always refund a deposit, but things happen. And I would add to um, Ms. Gavin's comments that um, setting up tables and then cleaning up after themselves is not involved to big beats, which we know are a huge part of events. That being said, I would also urge the council um, not to approve 2024-6 regarding the form of government. I have been discussing and requesting looking at changing our form of government for years. It is somewhat peculiar to me that all of a sudden a form of government, one isolated one, is appearing on an agenda. Um, even your predecessor, the CP Phil, Ms. Mahoney, she even said we should research and have presentations on different forms of government. Um, therefore, I don't, and I can't even begin to trust this community with a referendum because the wording is always not the proper wording. I would also like to address the bill list um, on page, why well, I down the pages, sorry. Um, but there's the Bernstein bill. And may I say that um, I have not received a reply from their attorney since February 18th. So if any of that billing and we don't get the detail includes that, I would say don't pay the bill. Um, the page prior to page one that is not numbered, um, I would like to see a breakdown of utilities. I don't think that we have one meter in this entire community for all of our municipal buildings. So I would like to know how much is electric here, there, and the other thing. There are about 60. We get about 60 utility bills a month. Okay, but it'd be nice to know by building. They aggregate it and they put it on the bill. It would be nice to know by building. Um, please don't interrupt me because right. they take away my minutes or checking. Well, I mean, uh, I'm just telling you, um, there were two payrolls listed with dates. Now, are those the week ending or the pay dates? That's a little confusing to me because if it, if it's if the 415 was a pay date, this is 424, I think. So is that really good? Um, these are things we got to look through. And there's a company, Pro Phoenix, which I believe is for our security software for 14 hundred dollars all of this is from the first page just about um do we have to go competitive and look at other softwares i can wonder about that because we know how we just don't like to do things like that and um the previous sheet prior to page one says i believe wire transfers and that little checks <laughs> now what is everything else in ach I, I, I don't know what the page one through or whatever that is on the bill list. It's a little confusing to me as a big encounter. Um, so it would be nice to have all of that clarified. And I don't see how you can vote to approve spending our money, which may I say as two residents is your money as well, um, without knowing these things or understanding them. And I guess I need to save everything else. For later, thank you. Thank you. Yes. To, to make sure that my end name and address, please. Lauren Egbert, E G B E R T, four oh four and a half, Brindley Avenue. Um, I was just wanting to clarify my understanding that the ordinance regarding investigating the change of government 
it's about exactly that. You're setting up a commission for which would have to be elected by the people, but it's to set up a commission to investigate and make recommendations regarding the possibility of changing the form of government. So if yeah, if that am I correct in the way I'm describing that? Is there anything that should be added to that about what that's that's about? Mr. Mayor, can I make a request that we have the attorney address this a little bit? Because there's probably a lot of people who might make well, this well, I would but... suggest we wait till that comes up. Well, just because, yeah. but if every single person in the audience has a question about that, this might save a bunch of time. Um, well, that's fine. So, Greg, could you address just like, can we just explain the charter, the charter planning commission? Yeah, like, briefly, that'd be great. So, the optional municipal charter law allows uh, two different routes to change form of government of the municipality. Um, one is by petition and one is by ordinance. So the ones I hear by ordinance. The ordinance, the question that's written in that ordinance is uh, the only thing that's changed from the statute or that is allowed to be changed. I know uh, Ms. Meadows had comments about the language of referendums, but in the case of Charter Study Commission, that language is specific in the chat statute. And the only thing that you can change in that language is the name of the town. So, that's straight from the optional municipal charter law. Um, what happens is, is if that ordinance is passed by the governing body, then the clerk will accept petitions for a charter study commission uh, and a question will be placed on the ballot. So uh, there'll be a question first to say, do you want the borough's a charter study commission to investigate the borough's form of government? Yes or no? Okay, so uh, forgive me for just slowing you down a little bit. So that question in November will just simply be whether the voters want us to want to have a commission that will investigate the possible forms of government we could have and whether we want to change or not. Correct. But that ballot will also include the names of anyone who's filed a petition to serve on that charter study commission, drawn in random order, like a non like the previous, I believe, out here in nonpartisan town. Um, and uh, you, the voters will be asked to answer the question. And then vote if if it passes, who would you want to be on the Charter Study Commission? And so those people are elected if the yes question passes. If it's a no, then it ends and there can't be another question for a period of at least four years. I think it's actually five. Don't quote me on that. But there's a period of time where the town can't do it again if the referendum fails. And uh, thereafter, if let's say it's yes, there's a Charter Study Commission. Charter Study Commission has nine months uh, to organize investigate alternative forms of government, uh, which I'll note in this municipality are not many, given its size and the fact that it's already a, a Falkland municipality. So this doesn't open you up to choose any form of government you like. You have to pick one from the optional municipal charter law. And there are, and given the population of your town, the fact that you're already a Falkland municipality, uh, I believe you're limited to only two others. Um, and the Charter Studies Commission presumably study those two forms of government in comparison to the current Falkland form. And it makes makes a recommendation. If Charter Study Commission votes uh, to not recommend a formal government, Charter Study Commission winds up its business, and that's that's the end of the story. And then again, the town can't do it again for a period of years. If the Charter Study Commission recommends to change the formal government, they have to do that within nine months, which places it before the time period to place another ballot question on the 2025 uh, general election ballot in the, in the municipality as to whether you want to adopt that formal government. And then if the town votes yes, then that resets the entire government to that form, as you guys did here in 1992. If the town votes no, then again, process ends, and you can't resurrect that for a certain period of time. Now, if there were a no vote, would would the, um, could you go back to the petition? If, if the people of the town petition the form of commission? That's a great question. That? I'm not a father, um, coming a father act expert working here. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't believe you can do it at all for a period of years if the if the question fails. But don't quote me on the specifics of that. You can Google optional for Faulkner Act, and there's literally a booklet that comes up that basically has a uh, flow chart and every everything else with it. That sounds great, yeah. and I just would like to urge the council to vote yes on that. I think that we at least um, deserve to open up the question, and that the form of government that we have right now puts perhaps too much responsibility on the shoulders of any one person. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And Mr. Mayor, can I ask if, uh, attorney one additional uh, question? I, I actually, I'll wait till we get to that. Yes.
Megan, sorry, I have 116 North Avenue. Um, back last year, I asked, and several of us asked, if there was weight capture, um, how much of the police department's and the DPW's time was spent um, on these extra events that are held in town, whether on the boardwalk or in Ryder Park, wherever. And at the time, we were told that that they were going to look into being able to capture that time so we could see um, what it was costing us because the fees for any events should actually cover that extra cost. I also have a question. All of these groups that come and whether it's boardwalk or Ryder Park, wherever, do they have to present a certificate of insurance? Yes, they do. Okay, so we're covered in that respect. Yes. Okay. But I would like someone to give us an answer as to how many hours our police department and our DPW spends on these. I don't know if it involves overtime or it's part of their regular schedule, but how many hours are involved in what we're paying for that portion of these events? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I have a question on the bills list. I have no idea what this means. It's on page three, and it's for Christina T. A tax loan reimbursement. Yeah. Why is that? Any happening? bill list questions, just you write them up. Um, we're going to start capturing the bill list questions so we can figure out how long that's taking from our administrative staff. So just All right. write it up and send it to me. Then I have two other on the bill list oh. that I'd like to answer tonight. Yeah. Yeah. There's comments. These are comments uh, on the agenda. I understand, it's on the agenda. But it's actually a really like we have uh, tax lien redemption things on almost every bill list. If we could just take two seconds and explain that, that would probably save a lot of time. Thank you. Um, you can start with the new I don't know what that no, means. No, I'm sorry. If you have comments, get them down and we will. All right. Well, then this is another thing I'm going to on the bill list. First of all, I'd like to say I'd like our law enforcement to have uh, all the amenities that they need to keep them safe and us safe. I just have a question about on page 10, the purchase of a firearm. Is that a firearm that has to put a, a tax stamp on it? It's, on, it's listed on the web. If, 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 I don't know, but they have the answer and you don't. And we will get you the answer. But I don't know if that answer is going to be correct. We have other questions about regarding that answer. So yeah. I, I could, I could, there's like five questions here for that one bill. Then sub, subset those questions. If I, I would like by Monday. Thank you. And then how will we, how will the answers be provided to everybody? Yes. How are they going to have the answers to these questions? You'll put them in the minutes. Yep. That's, that's not appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, don't forget. Yeah. Order, please. Yes. Jim Shakers, from 12th Fourth Avenue. Uh, when we get to the resolution about change of government, we would appreciate that the borough attorney could at least explain the other option, which is direct petition. So when we get to that point, if you could speak to that, my understanding, having Google that uh, that there are basically two options. You cover the one, it's a resolution, but there's another. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Mike Flynn, 600 for that. The state's uh, delayed, uh, excuse me, extended multiple number of roles as part of the budget process. And one of them is the annual financial statement for 2023. Uh, which was extended from February 10th to the 8th of March. Um, has this been submitted yet um, to the state? The 2020, I'm sorry, the 2023 AFS? I don't know if it has, but I can find that out. Okay. Um, thanks. It would be a good tool to help understand the budgeting process. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's the move board. to no, the board. board. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Board. I mean, she is. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Shish, Mrs. Shishier, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, uh, first of all, I have numerous things I want to discuss. Uh, we have Edmonds who just received $3,640 on this bill list. 
Now, we were talking about um, the police and overtime. Doesn't Edmonds provide time for um, employees? Isn't that the purpose of Edmonds? No, no, and if you have questions like that in that detail, could you just write those out? And we no, I cannot write it down. I'm well, asking you. Now, I have another question. And that, well, let me explain something to you, Mayor. Uh, I asked a question at the last borough meeting about the manual checks, New Jersey Department of Labor and Workforce Development. And that check was $23,967.61. And I never got a reply from you regarding that amount of money. I think it's so, therefore, I, you know, the follow-up is inconsistent. I think it's important that the uh, residents realize that Mr. Bernstein got another $9,405 this pay bill cycle to date from May 23, 2023 to now, he has been built, he has received $81,609.62. Uh, I would like for Mr. Cannon to realize, I want realize that he was just paid for his January fee. Um, I can, and now another question, uh, Olivia's and CP, uh, CO's, CPAs, that was the twenty twenty nine thousand dollars for the 2022 audit. Um, I would like to know, is, uh, is the 2023 aud audit in progress and will it be ready for the, um, for by June 30th? Be happy to answer those questions. Just get those questions into us, and we will respond. I just gave them to you. Now, another thing, I want to thank you for sending me uh, about the budget team. I find it very interesting that um, the budget team is uh, the rich, the CFO G Gartz, Meredith Demarco, Greg Farenbach, and Allison Gavin. Now, how many hours does? Um, Farrenbach spend on this. Also, in the let you with the uh, email that you sent me, you said that the council is a member of the budget team. Uh, I would like to know how much time uh, Jay, the uh, council has received, how much time they spent working with you uh, on the actual budget. No response from the mayor? No, but I'd like, again, if you, these are comments for the agenda, uh, we'd be happy to answer and we want to make sure we answer well, them. I, I've just, I've just spoken and I would like to have my comments. I would like to have my answers. We've got your comments and we will respond. And when, by what time, by when can I expect an, my response? As soon as possible. <laughs> And will you also um, uh, answer the question about the hours that Mr. Farenbach has spent on the uh, budget? That's one of your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. City Lieutenant's going to for that. Um, Greg, can you just clarify, um, I believe in a previous meeting, that when we questioned about the mayor taking questions and giving us answers later on that if it wasn't handled through the meeting that it couldn't be part of the minutes. Can we get clarification on that? Because, you know, and I mean, the mayor- Like I said, there is no part. It's the minutes are what they accept with their record of their meeting. So if they're arguing with each other about the minutes last time, then I also said that. And I'll let the two of you, Christian and John, make sure that everything is captured. And questions, and perhaps we find a better vehicle for answering these questions. Um, sadly, again, it seems Ms. DeMarco, our illustrious BA, is not here. So, again, I don't know what we're paying. I'm sorry, I forgot, to, I forgot to announce this earlier. Ms. DeMarco is ill tonight. I mean, she's she, she she's ill a lot, so I'm never paying for you, a lot. You, okay, could you uh, conduct you yourself? Know, with I have five minutes. I can say anything I want. Oh, no, five you, minutes. I'm sorry. I'm asking you to be civil. I am, oh, I, I am civil. I'm completely civil. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and in light of this, that uh, Mr. Mayor does not want to answer any questions about anything, um, I think it would save us a lot of time also moving forward that perhaps maybe we never, never approve a bill list. 
um, because there is no reason for you, and I am not giving you permission to spend any of my money on anything that we do not um, know about or approve about. And if it means DPW needs to walk, let them walk. If it needs somebody else needs to walk, let them walk. It's unfortunate that, again, we're closing in on probably 20 months. DPW still doesn't have a um, contract. And that's unfortunate because we all stand by them in the town. It's important. And the council does. So when people say it's the administration and the council that doesn't know it isn't, it's the administration that does not do the work. So um, again, please defend us at all costs. Do whatever you need to do. You have all of our support. Um, and we'll see what happens. So obviously, these are going to be like you know, 30 minute meetings and nothing will get accomplished, but we'll still come. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I, can I say something? Sure. I just want to say that. Um, Councilman Weber did send about, I don't know, 15 questions about the bills list. Uh, seven or eight. Seven or eight <laughs> questions about the bills list. Um, and seven or eight, two more after. Um, and, and got answers. Some of those questions are questions that I had as well. I agree with all of you that something needs to be done to improve this process because you deserve transparency. Um, I think a lot of your questions are valid. John, uh, excuse me, Councilman Weber, and asked some really good questions. Um, so it's unfortunate that you're not getting the answers that that you want. Um, and some of them are, are a little bit different, but um, I agree. We need to we need to fix this for sure. It's not fair. Well, I guess I guess what by by getting a clear question in in writing and getting a response, I would hope that that would alleviate any any questions you just referenced. Not so it's, it's, so it's, it's, the fact of the matter is these people took the time to come to this meeting yeah, and they had exactly. questions and yeah. the least we can do is answer them if for all you know if we absolutely don't have their answer we email it that's you know but yeah let's respect the people and just well, answer the I, question. I, I'm trying to I understand your point and there's a balancing act that has to be in place here. One of the things that I said at the beginning of the meeting is we're averaging three hours and 30 minutes a meeting average. We are, we blow other towns out of the water. We're looking at ways, if we can address this through better uh, management of this, I think I think we'll we'll see people that can't be at a three hour and 30 meeting start coming to meetings. Um, so I think it works on both sides of that. So uh, Mr. Kenny, you have a question. Maybe not. Mr. Kenny, I'm trying to. I, yeah, I'm trying oh, to unmute. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Herb Kenny, two sixteen Brindley. Um, quick question for um, Attorney Cannon. Um, you know, since the rules have always been if there's an agenda, and the bills list is on the agenda, um, does Mayor Fox have the ability to just shut that down this evening with no council vote, nothing, just saying we're not going to answer bills list questions? We're not saying we're not. I'm, not, I'm asking. I'm asking Attorney Cannon. And I'm answering your question. I'm not saying we're shutting down questions. I'm saying we're, we're asking people to. We're, we're trying to get a handle on the resources required to answer all these questions. Well, we're the problem. The, the problem, Mayor, is when you send an email to answer a question, the public doesn't hear it. This is a public meeting where public people, which is recorded, should be able to hear the answer that the BA would give if she was there. Correct or yeah. not? So, that, so just because you send an email doesn't mean the whole public knows the answer to the email, and that's not right. Oh, we said we would include that in the minutes, so thank you. I don't, well, who's, who's going to go find the minutes? Okay, thank you for your comment. Can I'm you not done. I'm not done. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know you weren't done. Keep can, you mute, can you mute yourself? <laughs> so a question I have is Mr. Martz, his compensation, which is on the bills list. We just paid him $24,000 in April. What do we? What is the fee that we pay for a part-time CFO? We have a shared services agreement. I understand that, but what is that for? How much money is that for? $22,000. A month, a quarter? A year. Yeah. Okay, we just paid $24,000 this month. We paid a $12,000 payment and two $6,000 payments. 
Okay, this is why these questions should be answered publicly. To go back to Mr. Bernstein, okay, he's on a run rate of at least $113,000 this year. Wouldn't it make a little bit more sense to actually settle the DPW argument, take all the savings, which he is now using almost 60% of his salary is directed towards employment, and hire a full-time CFO, which could help us clean up this financial issues with the audit and everything else. Those are my only questions. Thank you. And oh, one thing, Mayor, um, if your clerks are going to start spending time understanding how much times our meetings go, I'd be interested to know how many towns, what percentage of towns had a 13.2% tax increase, who had their 2022 20, audits late, and who has a late budget drafts. And I'll bet those meetings are a lot shorter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that looks like everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. One more. Mary Baxter, 284th Avenue. Um, that's the process. When Mr. Shook came up, you can ask him for his name. Now, we all know who he is. And I know it was an oversight on your, on your part. So I don't blame you, but I just would like to see consistency uh, from the mayor. Regarding the length of the meetings, um, I would ask you to think about what's the root cause issue of that. Everybody who comes up here during any comment period is simply seeking clarification about pretty simple questions. And if, I'm sorry, Ms. DeMarco was ill, I wish you well, but somebody should be sitting in that seat answering those questions because, Mayor, I don't see you having any willingness or knowledge to answer the questions. I don't care how like, the length of our meetings compared to other towns. I really don't, it's irrelevant. The problem is that nobody's questions ever get answered. Um, from what I've heard, I've never asked somebody to send me an email, but I've heard that that doesn't happen much either. So we just need, if we only had more transparency, which I'll tell you is a real root cause issue, uh, we would, could get through these meetings in record time. So I would just ask you to give that some time consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to the next agenda item, which is ordinances. Uh, ordinance 2024, uh, one second, 2024-6, ordinance authorizing the borough clerk to place the November 5th, 2024 general election ballot question asking voters whether or not they wish to establish charter commission to study possible recommend changes to the borough's form of government. I would like to offer up that ordinance. Uh, I'd like to move that ordinance. You're seconding? No, I'm actually moving it. Move, move. I don't think the mayor moved it, but. Okay, that's fine. Well, you're, int you're introducing it, right? I'm introducing it. Okay, you're seconding the introduction. It's blank here, so I figured he wasn't doing it. No, I just didn't know who was going to do what, so that's okay. okay. Um, oh, I think she's considering that a second. You are considering that a yeah. second? Okay. Did you okay. actually? You're, 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 you're second. That's fine. Okay. All right. So you That's want to move it? You want to see? Okay. He's moving. I'm seconding. Okay. okay. Mr. Noble, absent. Mr. Gubitosi, absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? I'm going to make a comment first. Um, I just want to appreciate everybody's comments on this. Um, notice this say, says we're authorizing the borough clerk. We're not forcing her. We're not telling her she has to do this. Um, I do think this is the best course of action right now, but there's a lot of time between now and November. Um, I am interested in actually uh, hearing what uh, Attorney Cannon has to say about the petition process as requested by a resident. Um, if you could tell us that process real briefly, Greg, could you describe the other one well? Uh, sure. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not as familiar with the advanced ordinance um right petition is basically initiated by the citizens so you have to get a certain percentage of the registered voters in the town to sign a petition before you do that you essentially have to uh form a small committee and write out the form of government that they're seeking to that you're seeking to change to um excuse me or you can also seek a charter study commission so like when you go with direct from the citizens you can actually propose a form of government if you get 25% of the voters in the town to sign that petition, then you can either have a charter study or you can spell the form of government you want to change to out straight in the petition, and then it goes right to the question. Um, I have seen people attempt to do a petition. Um, 
at my soap, I you guys know, well, some of you know, I'm a counselor in my time. I get people to sign a signature, to sign a petition for me. It takes a significant amount of time to get the 50 signatures I need to run for office. Uh, I've seen people try to do it to get 2,000 or, you know, 1,500 signatures or some like one person, 6,000 signatures at uh, Lacey. I uh, never see, I have not personally seen someone uh, accomplish that. You need, you need a large group of people and a lot of effort um, for a petition because of the number of signatures that we need. Um, but the petition has two potential routes, directly to the new form of government or to the charter study petition. That's the principal difference in the methodology. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ray. And Thank you. Um, just to continue my comments, um, you know, we had a workshop on this, uh, I guess it was in the fall, and uh, we you know, gathered some information then. And uh, this doesn't say that we're definitely doing this, but I think this is the right thing to do. And if, as um, Greg explained before, this would go on the, the ballot in November, ask people yes or no if they want to change their form of government. And at the same time, they're like, I don't know why you're shaking your head no. If they want to form a commission, form a commission. Right, right, right. So, the, the point is, and that at the same time, you would actually elect the people to, uh, to be on that. Commission and again, they just went through this in Red Bank. If you want to read all about it, they they just went through this in Red Bank. There should be plenty of stories in the paper. So, with those comments, I will finally go and say yes. Thank you for your patience. Mayor Fox. Yeah, I went before John. Oh, oh, you oh did. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. It was a long, it was a long interview yeah. between the two. Uh, I'm going to vote no. Um, I. The reason I don't support this is I'm not sure that's what we need right now. What we need, I think, is a focus on the community. We have um, any number of things going on right now, and uh, I want to focus our energy there. So I would vote on that. Okay, we have two adoptions um, tonight. Uh, so we have to have an adoption hearing on uh, Ordinance 2244. It's an ordinance supplementing Burroughs Revised General Ordinance in the new Chapter 352, previously reserved in the title Public Facility Rentals to authorize the Burroughs existing facility rental fees, policies, and procedures. So I'll make a motion to open the hearing on uh, the adoption for 2024. Uh, can you Hold on. We're, we're just we're just getting a point of order. So thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Mayor Fox. You're doing ordinance 2024 opening public hearing? Yep. Okay. Mr. Noble absent. Who's seconding? Sorry. Uh, second. second. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubatozzi absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Uh, ordinance 2024 5, um, ordinance to exceed missile budget appropriation limits and establish cap bank. But you have to. Any public comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I'm getting public comment. Oh, public comments on this ordinance. I'm sorry. My <laughs> apologies. Any public comments on this ordinance? Okay, I will move to close the public hearing and uh, take a Third vote. Oh, there's a hand. I'm sorry. Molly Conger. Molly Conger. Okay. Yes, question. Not sure if she heard you. Molly? Yeah. Ms. Conger? Yeah. yeah, I think Tim's in my Yes, High City Council. Was this um was this public comment or did I mishear? It's public comment on the specific ordinance that we just introduced, 2024. Day. I apologize. That's my bad. Let me mute up. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Fred. Fred. Fred Luther. Yeah, do you have a question on ordinance? I, yeah, no, sorry. I was also waiting for public comment. I'm with Molly here. Okay, thank uh, you. So, uh, at the, at the, that's at the end, right? That's yeah. correct. Thank you so much. God bless. So, I will um, make a motion to close the, the uh, public hearing and make a motion to pass 2024 for second. Mr. Noble absent, Mr. Gubitozzi absent, Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Uh, ordinance 2024 5. I'll make a motion to open 2024 5 uh, public hearing. Second. Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubatozzi absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. 
Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Any questions on 2024-5? Okay, there's no questions. I will um, move to close the adoption hearing and vote, move on ordinance 2024-5. Second. Mr. Noble absent, Mr. Gubatozzi absent, Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Okay. Um, just. Okay, uh, communications, we have SLEO seasonal employee memo. Um, Mayor Cassett, I'd like to uh, ask a question about that one. Uh, sure, Emma. Um, so I would like to know if any of these folks listed in this hiring memo are related to anybody that works for the town. Do we know that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Um, resolutions, we have a consent agenda uh, resolutions. I'll just briefly read those. We have 2024-92, the bill list, uh, 2024-93, approval of BP, B, B, P, T, A, to conduct two on-premise 50-50 cash raffles for Thursday, May 30th and June 6th from 6.30 to 8.30. 2024-94, approval of Kaleidoscope of Hope to conduct their annual 5K walk race for Saturday, September 28, 2024, from 6 to noon. Uh, noon. 12 p.m. Uh, 2024 95, the approval of National Multiple Sclerosis to conduct their charity bicycle ride for Saturday, May 11th, 2024, from 6 30 to 4, pass through only. 2024 96, approval for the Sharing Network Foundation to conduct their 5K walk for Saturday, May 18th, 2024, from 8 30 to 11 30, pass through only. And uh, 2024 97, authorizing the appointment of special class one law enforcement officers attending the May class at the Monmouth County Police Academy. Uh, that's it for consent agenda items. Um, I, I have a question on the bills list, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know I asked eight questions and um, I did get answers, but I did find it happens. You get more questions. Um, one of the answers, uh, one of the questions I had was about something on probably early on because of creative management. And I was told the answer for that is they provide, I've never heard of creative management. I don't recall it anyway. They provide gasoline. And um, I know from looking at a lot of bills list, we generally get our gasoline from uh, an outfit called Riggins Incorporated. And we spent, um, I guess, in the neighborhood of $3,500 in gasoline. So does anybody know why we have a different vendor for gasoline besides Riggins on this bill list? I don't. And for, for an additional, I should say, three and a half. Actually, that doesn't add up, but um, it says for that, an additional three and a half thousand dollars. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. The only thing I can surmise is that we have a couple of vendors and we use that vendor, but I don't have the answer to that. Before. Okay. Uh, I just had never seen creative management before. Okay. And we can follow up on that. Familiar with Riggins. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it for my bill of questions. Okay, motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Uh, Mr. Noble absent, Mr. Gubitosi absent, Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Yes. Uh, okay, we'll go to um, individual resolutions 2024-86. Introduction of 2024 budget to read, read by title only. Uh, make a motion to approve 2024-86. We have a second. Wow. I'll second it so we can discuss it. How's that? Okay. Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubitozzi absent. Ms. Mahoney? No. Mr. Weber? Okay. Do you want to say yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'd like to add a comment so that everybody knows why I'm saying no. Um, um, I'm unfortunately going to say no to this, um, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. On March 27th, this council was given three Excel workbooks with multiple tasks in each. It was a lot of information, a lot of schedules, a lot of numbers. I was warned that municipal budgets were a beast like no other, especially in New Jersey, where gap accounting isn't used. But this was clearly unlike any budget I had done in the past. This council has repeatedly asked questions and requested to speak to the CFO. 
an example of a simple question. Why the number for each of the funds, each sewer and current, did not equal to the to the budget ask numbers in two different files. Budget prep file has a recommended budget of 16 million 55,417 spot 66. 2024 budget appropriation and revenue file, which had no revenue, has a recommended budget of 16 million 129,144 spot 16. A 500,000 difference, $500,000 difference. If you add up the balances of the three funds, oh, from a new PDF that was given to us before the last council meeting, the actual total of these three funds is $15,833,306. At 2.30 today, the mayor sent us an email telling us we should not use the data that had previously been sent to us and instead use these new files. There is the- Can I clarify just a point on that? I'm sorry. After I'm done, okay, we can- sure, sure. I can wait. You can, yeah, I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Sure. So, and instead use other files. There is a glitch in Edmund. The data is wonky. That's what was being told. We've therefore been asked to use summary PDF data. We do not want summary high level so-called user-friendly PDF data. Mr. Gubatosi told me that auditor Bob Oliwa said we need to use Edmund Systems data and that's what we've been asking for. We would like to see three years, 2024, 2023, and 2022. We would like to see three categories, appropriations, revenue, and actual for 2022 and 2023. And for all three of these, we want detailed line items in Excel. And these, this information needs to come from Edmonds. So therefore, I am not approving this budget introduction. We still need answers. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, so let me clarify a point um, that you made, um, Councilwoman. Um, number one, um, what I commented on today was primarily the revenue document. And the revenue document in Edmonds hasn't been used um, by the CFO. If you look at the user friendly, which is really kind of, I'll call that the Bible of what gets submitted to the um, state, there's 16 pages on the revenue document in the um, in the state form. About two or three of those have data in them. The rest of them are blanks because they just don't apply to us. So there is a level of detail in those three pages. Um, now, I, I spoke to the um, CFO about that and he basically said, on the expense or appropriation side, because it's, I don't know how many lines, it's a thousand lines because it's at departmental- 1,030. 1,030. It's departmental, and that's what we use to review with departmental budgets with uh, the appropriate department heads. You have to, you have to use that. And so that's, I think, the basic follow-up comment. I'm finding, and I found this out from um, the CFO, that um, because there aren't a significant amount of those revenue lines, um, some CFOs don't go, go that route. They go the route of, they basically go through the 15 lines or so that we have of revenue and take actuals, take data from the state and create that revenue profile. So that's basically why what I said today was that um, he doesn't use it. Um, additionally, I know that um, a couple of people have tried to go back and do some reconciliations to prior years. Ed, post audits, Edmonds is not adjusted. So mm -hmm. you have numbers that are not gonna tie out, but the key document is that 42 page or 42, whatever it is, how many pages, uh, user-friendly schedule from, that we provide to the state. Uh, that has the level of detail and revenue, that's the lowest level of detail that we have. So I, I just wanted to clarify that point that I'm not saying all the data is bad, I'm saying, we know that the revenue, I don't think it's been used by the last couple of CFOs. And that's this is the first time this has come up, require asking revenue questions off that detail sheet. We usually use it for appropriations, which is that thousand lines. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Okay, and I'll make a comment um, similar to Councilwoman Mahoney's. Yes, we got spreadsheets. We got lots of spreadsheets. Um, they're not totaled up. They're not summed, but you know, some of us on the council took the time to sum those things and when you can't make you know what was supposedly 
the, the final number for revenue from 2022, which is the last year we have audited numbers for. So I thought that was a pretty good place to start. When you can't make the total revenues for that year uh, in the spreadsheet that we're given, so you can't make that match the, the budget document where you know it says what the revenue was for um, for 2022, you know, that my question started and ended right there. Um, you know, with the mayor's calling, you know, user friendly, it, it is the state form. It's what they require, you know, it, but it's a giant PDF and yes, it can be many, many pages long. Um, from our perspective, the advantage of the Excel spreadsheets is that you can do things with the data. You can like add up a column and that's kind of really helpful when you're looking at this stuff. So, um, you know, there's a discrepancy, what you're calling user friendly, what I would call user friendly. Um, well, to me, it's kind of like, well, it's just that, you know, I, I understand there's a, there's a, why you call it that, but if you want to like find out how these numbers were arrived at, it's, it's, it's very hard. It's not user friendly. Um, and I think, I feel like we're at a level with, you know, you've got kids doing math, they get to a certain point in math class. And then at a certain point, the teacher says, okay, the math gets complicated enough. You need to show your work. So it's kind of just, you know, you've heard about the, the many, you know, the 130 questions or whatever. Um, we are really asking to show the work. How were these numbers arrived at? Uh, and we don't feel like we have answers to that. I don't think we're just being, you know, curmudgeonly or whatever about it just for, for fun, because it's really not that fun. Um, and, you know, I know Councilman Kubitosi would be saying the same thing if he were here, but he is not. So I'm going to say it in a much shorter fashion. Um, <laughs> there's still, we think there's still work to do. I hope we can get there soon, because I know it is difficult on Department heads when they don't have their budget as soon, you know, if the budget passed and the year's half over, um, that's you know not ideal either. So I hope we can get this done soon. Uh, I think a faster way to this would be to give some time to the CFO, especially with Councilman Gugatosi. Uh, I think it's a faster way, and I'll leave it at that and just vote no on this budget introduction. Thank you, Councilman. And um, I didn't make up that name user friendly. <laughs> no, I understand. And that's user friendly because I would tend to agree with you that when you look at a I don't know if it's 40 pages or 70 pages. It's, it's, it's a long document. Uh, it's got a lot of detail. My first year looking at it, you know, your, your head spins, but I, it is the document that has 24 budget, 23 budget, 23 spend. Uh, so it does give you some good trend information. Um, uh, there was questions on revenue between 23, 22. I, I hopefully answered that for uh, Councilwoman uh, Mahoney. Um, because we did take a revenue hit. And I, I think I sent that to you also today or yesterday. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I still don't think my, you know, questions got answered, but we can continue discussing. And, and I, you know, I hear what you're saying about the document and it's, just, it's, it's a beast, but if you're trying to figure out how you got to those numbers right. that were plugged into this giant document, that's still the stage that we're at. And that's, that's where we're at. Right. So, one of the issues that the CFO had, and uh, well, let me, I'll vote yes, mm -hmm. and um, I'll, I'll finish my comment. Um, one of the issues the CFO had was that when we turned that budget over on March 27th, um, we did try to set up time on April 3rd, and that was basically rejected. And on April 10th, we said, here's the time for your questions, ask the questions, and Councilman Gubitosi chose not to ask some questions. He said, I'd rather meet with you. Um, and that's just the way it's played out. Now, um, we have answered a number of questions. Uh, the CFO has answered a number of questions. The CFO has taken exception to the fact that we sent, he sent a file on March 27th, and that file was kind of taken apart. Tabs were added, analysis was added, and questions came out of that. And his view was, I'm trying to develop a budget here. Somebody just took this file and blew it up on me. Now, he had the original file, but you understand the point. If I, if I send you an Excel file and you change it all around, I'm going to take exception to that. So he, so he did, which I, I understand. Um, well, don't, yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, I do, if, that's, if, that's, if you have it, we have an auditor CPA sitting up here, and he's sitting up here for a reason, and if that's how he needs to come to his understanding about the budget. I mean, I'm not the one that took this thing apart and did all these things, right. but of course Al did. So I but, think that's within his right. And I'm, 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 most people be encouraged that he did that to find out um, how these numbers were arrived at. What I'm saying to you is that the CFO developed the budget. Those, a lot of that change did come from Councilman Gubitosi. The questions that came out of that, we feel like we answered. He feels like we didn't. 
Uh, we answered this final set of questions last Wednesday. It was 21 questions, which was about 10%, the last 10%. Um, we provided answers to that. Haven't really gotten a response on that. Um, and it, and one, the most critical that he had questions on was the fund balance and replenishment, which we provided on April 10th. So um, I, I think we, and if you look again at the trend information year on year, it looks it looks reasonable. It looks, it follows. Um, we actually reduced our expense, our, our revenues down marginally, but it's pretty consistent. It's not like a million three that we took the hit in 2023 versus 2022. The numbers, I think, 75 down. So um, at what point does answering a couple hundred questions and having a 3.74% increase become unreasonable? The other point I have for you all is have you, do you have any recommendations on changes to it? I, I haven't heard any of those. And I, I'm not asking you for those right this second, but that's what, when we hand over that budget, our expectation is we'll clarify things, which I think we have. And do you have issues with it? Or do you want to make a change? Do you have a recommended change? Um, and, and that's what we're waiting on right now. So um, hopefully that's forthcoming. So with that, I'll vote my yes and we'll move to the next thing, which is individual resolution 2024-98, approval of BBBCA to conduct their various community events for the remainder of 2024. Make a motion to approve 2024-98. Discussion? Yes. Um, so this is with a, a waiving of the fee, correct? Yes. Okay. And our tourism pays the $2,500 fee, don't they? They no. No. They just did no. for the green fair. My understanding is that they just did for the green fair they had. They paid the twenty five hundred. I am unaware of that. I'm okay. unaware of that too. That's right. I am unaware of that. I didn't think. I don't no. think no. I'll, I'll follow up on that, but I'm not. I'm not aware that. I'm not sure how we could how could we have charged the tourism commission a twenty five hundred dollar fee. I don't know, but I don't think the only way that could have happened is if it was through the vendors, but I don't think any vendors paid us $2,500. To my knowledge, no, I didn't really have anything to do with that. I mean, we could follow up on that. I, I was not aware of that. I guess my concern is, it, I mean, it's a bigger problem because I think the ordinance, we need to, I think the ordinance needs to change. Um, so I, I was under the impression that Tourism had paid a twenty five hundred dollar fee. If tourism is going to pay a twenty five hundred dollar fee, or you know, I, I don't, I don't understand where we, you know, I, I get the 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 fire department, you know, uses it. And maybe they wouldn't need to pay a fee, but I, I don't. I, this, well, it's quite bad point about the fire department. Well, I mean, like if we do an event, if we if the fire department something uses the park, I don't think we do we charge them twenty five hundred dollars fee. Uh, no. Okay. Well, I, I give you a better example. Okay. The fire department, the 10K they run every year. The okay. 5K run, sorry, it's right. not 10K. Couldn't make it if it was 10K. Right. 5K. We do not charge them for that. Okay. And that's probably pretty hefty police expenditure. Right. And it begs a question do you do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, um... I, I think no. But I also think the same. I, I have trouble differentiating this particular organization in that their sole purpose is to support Bradley Beach. I am not looking to make this a, a money maker. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm, I'm looking for some form of consistency and, and also making sure that if there are DPW resources used, I know that we say we're going to invoice them. And I also don't, you know, which is, which is good. And I assume we have a tracking for that, but also when we have these big events, and, and I know Erica said that they don't require police because they're not closing roads, but I don't understand how we can say that we're going to have all these people in one place and not have a police officer there. We don't have a police officer there at these big events. I, well, I'll let you answer that. Certain events, yes. Certain, Certain events. events. And then what's the criteria for having a police officer, not just when there's alcohol? Just uh, Obviously, how large the event is. Plays a big part. Yeah. 
but there's obviously more events now than the past. Pardon, I'm sorry. There's more events going on now than there was in the past. Yes, right, right. So I assume that there would also be, if there were any police fees, that it would be included in that. Um, no, no, any comments, John? Yeah, no, I have comments. And um, I, yeah, this resolution is also about waiving the fee. And I know I spoke to Ms. Gavin just today and I learned some new information since then. So I would like to approve this ordinance, but without waiving the fee, but I want to be clear, I am not in favor of charging the fee for every single event. I feel like we should take this fee from them this one time. And um, as it says here, if there are uh, if there were additional costs to the town, that should be noted, invoiced, you know, whatever. Um, and then maybe we can treat this like a security deposit and it can be taken um, out of this. But I believe that um, the tourism was actually charged $2,500 for the uh, for the event that was just this last weekend. And, you know, I have another question a resident mentioned before. Have we ever, Mr. Mayor, do you know if we've taken a look at like, or have we asked DPW, hey, can you tell us what it costs when these events come to town? What are the extra costs? What's yep. the overtime? So have we done that yep. with DPW? We have, and they've charged, we've charged uh, organizations. Okay, so, so they, so they kind of know what it takes. So they should, so I feel like if they have their event, and if you know there's absolutely no involvement by DPW, then there's there should be no invoice or anything like that. But if DPW has undertaken this process and they kind of know this is what this costs and this is what that costs, or just hours or whatever. So after the event, if we go back to DPW and say, hey, did you incur any other event, uh, any other costs, then we should have a handle on that and we, we can sure. So the current process to do that is the the I don't know if you see the supervisor of um, DPW meets often with the borough administrator and those are the kinds of things they review and he will actually quantify and say we spent two people x amount of hours doing what we're doing okay so that's great i love that 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 happens so i feel like if we have a 2500 dollars kind of like a security deposit from the bbca one time and then that process happens after all of these events yes. obviously Except for one, which, you know, the food pickup's not going to require anything in the park or anything like that from DPW. Um, I feel like that's a good way to do this, and I, I wonder if we can pass in a, a resolution such as that this evening. Can finance hold the twenty five hundred dollars check and not cash? No, you're not supposed to hold borrowed funds for more than forty eight hours. Yeah, uh, learning new stuff all the time. Okay. Okay. Are we able to re? In Berkeley, like say we get to yeah, the end of the summer. Question: What's the what's the purpose of? I don't think they're going anywhere. I mean, I know where to live. All right. So, so, but my question is: Can we? But if law doesn't allow us to treat this like a security deposit and like hold on to it, can we reimburse money at the end? Of, if we get through these these eight events, do the at the end of the year, like you know what? All those invoices only added up to a thousand dollars. So here's fifteen hundred dollars back. Can we do that? Happy nice Christmas present. Can we? Greg, do you have any idea if we can? Is that legal? I don't know. You're really spitballing for your principal. The ordinance clearly states that $2,500 is a non refundable thing. Well, mm -hmm. well, code of compliance might be the same. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 They have an event next week. Well, this is the point where they have to get first the money if it comes down to it. We do have a meeting so before now. I, I would love to hear from Charlotte. Yes. We'll pay the one time if that makes everyone feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Excuse me. I just am offering the resolution. I'm confirming and saying we would absolutely pay one time if that feels right to the council. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't. I mean, if you guys have eight events at twenty five hundred dollars, yeah. I can't do the math. So I, I can't see you guys coming up with twenty five thousand dollars to. No, I'm yeah. not. No, that, no, 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 no. I'm not. We're so, agreeing yeah, with you. We're. I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing with you. I can't see you paying. You know, twenty thousand dollars to do the events when it's for you know. 
my town people may not agree with me. I believe that's originally what we were what we had planned. We were going to pay one time twenty five hundred dollars. I told you I couldn't hold on to the check, so I gave it back to you because you, you didn't want it cash. Can you table this? Yeah. No. Well, because well, these yeah. events are getting yeah. planned and they have to, they have to be planned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, order, please. Order, please. Yeah. Order, please. Can we change this, this resolution to reflect what Ms. Gavin just said? And we pass this resolution. And we don't be able to fee. That's correct. And most of the time, we're going to talk about this one time. I mean, I can't pay the twenty-five. I think we can. Greg, right, can we change the language on this on the fly and just make it reflect that they're? Yeah, you guys want this out? You can pay one time twenty-five hundred. No, no, no. But I'm saying change the resolution on this and make it. Oh, let me get to the resolution. Got to click all of them. Yeah, turn on the next game. What are you doing? I wish I had that. I don't think the next title is that. I'm just kidding. Like, like, uh, 98, right? They won. But shut down. Just see the comment on the uh, paragraph on the bottom. The 91. 98. 98. 98. 98. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's involved. It's involved. Yeah, you can change your language. You can say the BBCA shall tender a single $2,500 special events deposit fee for the above. We can do that. No, no, no. Okay. Or, or please. Okay, so. So your motion to amend the if you if you want to consider that you move, move to amend the resolution and then you can vote on the new language as written. So move we can make the move. I would like to motion make a motion that we amend the language of this resolution mm -hmm. uh, to require a single special event deposit fee in connection with the eight events. What he said. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, in order to move us forward and uh, so we have to vote on amending it first. Yes. For, yep. Yes. Okay. So I'm making that motion. Second. Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubatosi absent. Ms. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? Um, I, I am struggling to vote yes on this. No, I'll tell you why. Um, it's not because I don't want to support the BBBCA, but I struggle with not providing some level of support to an organization that does nothing but support Bradley Beach. It's not a foundation, it's not a pass-through, it's, it's uh, and we've had a relationship where we co-sponsor events. They've never taken advantage of that. Um, their sole purpose is to promote our town and their volunteer base is incredible. So uh, we're treating them like they're outsiders. And in fact, and in fact, they're not. So I struggle with um, just the whole treatment of this particular organization. The example before, our fire department is second to none. Uh, they have a 5K, they make some money off of that. <clears throat> we expend a tremendous amount of resources in DPW and police. We don't charge them. Why? <clears throat> because they're here to support Bradley Beach. Um, so that's why I struggle with this. Um, I will vote, um, I will vote yes, but um, I hope we can relook at this uh, ordinance and um, you know, treat a, a volunteer base and a group that does nothing but support this community and the businesses in this community, um, treat them um, more like a true partner and um, not somebody that we're just transacting business with. So I felt like yes. Yeah. Okay. Next uh what is oh, uh, now it's we have to do oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now we have to, to, to pass the resolution. Pass the resolution. What I said before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You do you want do you uh yeah okay. motion. Motion to adopt resolution. Okay, second. 
Mr. Noble absent, Mr. Gupitozzi absent, Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mayor Fox? What I said before, yes. Okay, thank and you. the revised? Yes, yes. that's the revised. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 2024 99 approval of fresh markets in Jersey to conduct their farmers and markets at Riley Park June 1st, July 6th, August 2nd, September from September 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Make a motion to approve 2024 99. I would like to do the same thing and revise the language of this. Uh, this is a for profit venture. Um, I don't want to waive their fee. I do want everybody to know that with these, uh, these markets, they are offering our Main Street businesses a free booth at their at these fresh markets, what do they call it? Yes, farmers markets. Um, so there is inclusion of businesses in town, and basically that was kind of the deal to get them to come to do this. However, uh, I don't feel right waiving the fee for this. So kind of like the last one, they're having four events. Would love to make it so we just ask them for the fee for the one time to cover the four events and. Um, so I will make a motion that we revise this language similar to the last one and ask for the $2,500 fee for one time for this uh, for-profit venture. Uh, I didn't realize they were giving uh, our businesses yeah. um, a free spot. They're giving them a free spot. Yeah, but they're bringing plenty of their own, I believe. So, yeah, it's, it's a combination. Oh! Uh, yes, sure. No, that was a that was a um for a second. I, I'll second it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Um Mr. Noble absent, Mr. Gubitozzi absent, Miss Mahoney. I I think they're for, for profit. Why aren't we just making them pay every time? Because I think they won't come then. Like, right. Right. Yeah. Like there's so many dollars would rather be. Right. Um, and they're gonna reimburse all expenses. Yes. Yes. Uh Mr. Weber? Yes, on this Amendment. motion to revise it. Yes. Okay. Uh Mayor Fox. Yes. Okay, I make a motion to approve 2024 98 as amended. Well, not 2024 98, 99. 99. I'm sorry. Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubitozzi. It's absent too. Absent. <laughs> Mahoney. Sorry, my brain. <laughs> yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mayor Fox. Yes. 12400 approving facility rental application agreement in accordance with the ordinance 2024 4 creating chapter 352 public facility rentals adopted simultaneously herein. You're with. Make a motion to approve. This thing. Speaking of fees, I have a question. I'm still not 100% sure why this, we did an ordinance for this, which we just passed earlier in the meeting, and we also need a resolution. I'm still not 100% sure it was explained to me, but now I can't remember that. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Right here. So, um, long story short, the borough has a practice with the facility rental agreement that's on there has been deemed, has been used for a significant period of time and it works very well. And as you can see, the fees are all worked out. For, everyone's happy in general. Um, there was a question of one of our employees as to where this is found in the borough code. And the fact is that it wasn't. So they brought that to the parents' attention, they brought it to my attention. So the ordinance codifies um, the fees and it indicates that it's set by resolution of the governing body. So insofar as you adopt the ordinance tonight, that resolution, Essentially, it's setting the fees and the and the procedures which were were already in place, so it's kind of fine. Does that make sense? The ordinance just references a resolution. That's the resolution. Gaps and gaps. Thank you. Uh, so I would second that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubitozzi absent. Uh, Ms. Mahoney. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mayor Fox. Yes. Um, 2024 101 approving and directing the planting of shade trees and the planting wells at various locations along Main Street. Uh, so I would like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2024 101. Second. Mr. Noble absent. Mr. Gubitozzi absent. Ms. Mahoney. Yes. Mr. Weber. And I'm gonna comment because just for good measure. Um, this is this is not new trees on plate. I mean they're new trees, but we're 
replacing trees that in tree wells that already exist, they probably should have been replaced a long time ago. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that the Shade Tree Commission has been trying to get trees planted on, on Main Street. So it's one thing or another. Um, I know we are endeavoring to be, you know, use our grant and, and do some stuff on Main Street. I don't think we're gonna have to remove the trees. However, I will say that we're just doing this because the Shade Tree Commission planned a planting that's gonna happen on May 4th and they ordered these trees and it would be great uh, if we could fill those wells on Main Street um, and they have a plan B just in case if not. So um, I will vote yes to this. Uh, Mayor Fox. I, I will vote, I'm gonna vote uh, no and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, we embarked on a Main Street initiative. We had our first meeting yesterday. Um, there's been some discussion between Public Works, myself, the Borough Administrator and the Chairman of the Shade Tree Commission saying that uh, we're going to be expeditious with this plan for Main Street because it's a million four. And we've already got it. We had a good meeting yesterday. I think we'll need two more meetings to make a recommendation. Uh, there's a chance that we'd have to move some things around. Plus, this is more complex than the trees that we plant in a regular planting on the on the um, on the planting strip for residents. Because uh, as we stated in our meeting yesterday, there's some wires coming out of some of these wells. We don't want to plant trees, have to move them after the fact. So um, uh, Public Works is not supportive of this. Uh, not, not, neither is the uh, Borough Administrator, neither am I at this point. Uh, I can tell you um, that, you know, everybody wants to have Main Street have a better look. That includes trees. I don't like seeing empty tree wells, tree wells either, but I think we finally got the funding to move something forward. Basis the meeting yesterday, I think we're going to, we're going to deal with a number of these issues more expeditiously and not try to do a big bang theory on a couple blocks. So I, I just think this is, um, this is, and, and, uh, and from an alternate, alternate perspective, we just took down a number of trees on Sylvan Lake because of that ash um, disease. Um, if there was a need to replace um, trees that have been ordered, we can, we've got spots for them uh, that are easier to deal with. So uh, I would vote on this. Okay, um, we don't have um, any announcements. Uh, so I guess we will go to mayor and council reports. Um, why don't we start with council Okay, um, I will, excuse me, start by commenting on this tree by solution. Um, that we just passed. I, I mean, I, I listened to what the mayor just said, and it reminded me that there was a, we had an email exchange, and um, and he just said, you know, the decision had been made by himself and the administrator and the head of the DPW, but that's not what our ordinance says. Our ordinance doesn't say those three people decide what gets planted on Main Street. It actually says the mayor and council. So I don't think it's appropriate to um, make the call one way or the other until we have a meeting of the mayor and the council, which we just did, and we voted, and that's the way the vote went. So that's the that's. Why we do things that way because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, I am going to address some questions that were asked by residents, uh, specifically Ms. Eileen Shizius, um, regarding the budget team. And she got a message about who was on the budget team, and everybody that sits up here was was mentioned. She asked, "Well, how many hours were we involved in developing the documents uh, that you know are we're going to decide on when we ever get around to doing the budget?" Um, I know my answer is at zero hours. Zero hours in developing those documents. Yes, I they, I was given those, these documents, and I spent a lot of time, and I added things up, and they didn't add up, and that's why I voted no. But um, we didn't spend any time in in uh, developing those documents, so I'm not sure why I got put on the uh, the budget um, team. I also want to let you know that there's a town in Monmouth County that had much shorter meetings, and you just have to go back in time because it was Bradley Beach. Bradley Beach used to have much shorter meetings. And um, even when I sat up here, it wasn't that long ago, okay? My first term and first year, my second term, you know, we had a lot shorter meetings. Um, I think a resident mentioned this. We have to address the root cause of why. Why are these meetings so long? Why do people ask so many questions? But you know, the bottom line is there's not trust. Okay, I get it. I'm, I'm willing to say that there is not trust. And uh, But you look at some of the things that have transpired, and I think there's... Uh, and I think it's 
not unreasonable that people do not trust, you know, everything that's going on up here or with this administration. Um, I mean, you certainly had the, the situation with the chief of police. That was, you know, you know just shocking. And um, I can understand people have a lot of questions and don't trust. We have a situation where, um, from a budgetary standpoint, we got the 2022 audit. We thought we were going to replenish $700,000 worth of uh, with the surplus funds, and we only replenished twenty-two thousand dollars. That does not exactly foster trust among people. So this is, you know, these are the root causes of this. And I don't think it's a good use of anybody's time to go around and find out how long other towns' meetings are. I think we should put our time and effort into uh, establishing and man maintaining trust. And you're not going to do that by silencing the people here, not answering their questions, and telling them to put it in email. I mean, I get told to put my questions in email now sometimes too. Um, you know, and, and sometimes it's appropriate, but uh, I think that should be used really judiciously. So, so that's, uh, that's that. On to actual commissions and stuff in town. Um, the Shade Tree Commission is going to have an Arbor Day celebration uh, on, that's this Friday, April 26th, four o'clock in uh, Second Avenue Park. They do this every year, plant a tree in honor of the eighth grade graduating class. It's a great celebration. We're not sure how many eighth graders we're going to get there this time because of, uh, like, oh, is it four or three o'clock? I thought it was three o'clock. Uh, it could be three o'clock, but I was said, I was thinking four o'clock. If it's three o'clock, that's fine. How about we check on that for everybody and we, um, put an everybody, and we'll put an email, we'll put in the minutes to the next meeting. Now we'll, we'll get, we'll get after people. Um, I absolutely could be wrong on that three o'clock. I'm hoping it's closer to four at the end of the day, but that's fine. Um, we do this every year for the you know eighth graders, and uh, we do get some participation from the school. We hope we get some eighth graders at this time, but um, it's a great little celebration, and hopefully we'll have good weather and come on out on Friday. The following weekend on Saturday, and I know I said this wrong last time, Saturday, May 4th, is our tree planting event. We have some volunteers lined up. Yay. We've got a bunch of trees lined up to plant. Yay. We could probably still use a few more volunteers, so if you are free, uh, and you want to plant some trees, it's not that hard. DPW digs the holes, yay, which is the, the hard work. Um, just see me and we'll get you on as a volunteer. Um, I get the pleasure of reading the police report first time ever. Um, and we have a few things to report here. Uh, a local area male and female were both arrested for possession of heroin, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a hypodermic syringe. Police responded to a report of a male committing lewd acts in the north end of the boardwalk. We were able to locate and confirm his behavior, so he was arrested for the same. He was also charged with unlawful possession of a weapon and possession of methamphetamine. Uh, a local resident was arrested and charged with theft, and the police are looking forward to more great weather. It's part of the report, so um, and thank you, gentlemen, for that. Uh, I'm going to read the first aid report. Oh, wait, oh, wait, this is still police police business. Yeah. National Take Back Initiative is this Saturday. So that's uh, 27. Thank you very much. Um, and they do this every year, twice a year, correct? Uh, you can bring unused prescription drugs back to the police station. They get properly disposed of. This is a national, I think, uh, DEA initiative where you know you don't want that stuff going and flush down the toilets going in your waterways and whatnot so bring your unused drugs no questions asked right okay great um and they will get properly disposed of so this saturday 10 to 2 right here they just go to the door or just like they were going to dispatcher right okay terrific thank you uh to not it's controlled with anonymous they can't take hypothermic needles uh and batteries must be removed from vape or e-cigarettes okay Thank you. Thank you for that. First day report for the operational period ending today. The squad responded to seven day calls and seven night calls. Uh, 10 were for medical, four were for fire calls. The squad conducted one drill for the safety and education of the membership. The squad provided medical overwatch for the Earth Day event in Riley Park. There were no out of town requests for mutual aid, and they requested no mutual aid. Uh, from other towns. Uh, they fulfilled 100% of their assignment. And as I've said before, the fire department is um, doing monthly reports. So we will have that at the next meeting. Um, and uh, that is the extent of my report. Thanks very much. Councilman? 
Sure, I don't have much. Uh, Council President DeNoble sends her, her regards. She's sorry she can't be here tonight. Um, this is the first meeting she's missed since she was elected, but she will be back next week or next meeting. And Council Michael Potosi sends his regards. He's not here either, but he doesn't miss many meetings either. So he's sorry they they're sorry they can't be here, but John and I and we're carrying the load. We carry the load. We tried. Um on May 6th, the Environmental Commission will meet. That's all I have about my commissions and things. And um, I just want to say that uh, I agree the, the root cause of the problems. I belong, uh, Council President Genoble and I belong to Shore Women elected, elected officials, which is just a, a group of women elected officials in, in the Shore towns who get together and we talk once a quarter to talk about which who's issues that are going on in our town. Uh, the towns with uh, the shortest meetings are towns where very few people show up for meetings. But that's usually because there's nothing going on in that town and people feel like they're getting their questions answered and they don't feel like they're a transparency problem. Uh, a good council meeting should be quick. It should be easy. Um, and when people think their town is being run the way they want it to be run, they don't have a lot of questions and they don't have a lot of concerns. Um, so um, questions, I welcome them. I don't always have answers, uh, but I really think that you all deserve your answers and you deserve them in this public forum. So I would love the day for us to, that these meetings you didn't even have to think about, that everything was so well taken care of by this administration and this council, that uh, Wednesday nights were a great night to, to watch TV or maybe catch a council meeting that only took an hour. We'll get there. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll start my comments, but I do wanna make just a comment to Councilman Weber. Um, the context in which you were on that uh, team was that each council person was provided uh, one of the biggest variable areas of our budget is the capital improvement process. What projects of capital we are going to embark on. So I believe every, and, and I was not part of that interface initially with the borough administrator, but I believe she went out and asked everybody to get their capital improvement input to her. So that's a key part of the budget. It's not, super lengthy, but it's a key part of the budget. So I, I'm not sure whether you did okay. or didn't supply that. If you didn't, um, you just missed your channel. No, a, that makes sense. I didn't know that made me part of the, the budget team, but got it. Well, it's one of the key, I mean, one of the most variable key pieces of the budget is capital. I mean, when you take all the fixed costs we have, our biggest area of room from a variability perspective is capital. Um, so um, I just wanted to make that point. I've got a couple things, uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Uh, first, again, Main Street, um, small team kicked off and we had a productive meeting yesterday. We'll keep you posted. Uh, infrastructure project status. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings with CME on the Northside Promenade building, the Promenade Grant, Main Street, Sylvan Lake, which is very new and some other miscellaneous grants. Uh, we'll be framing, uh, actually, I'm gonna work with them to frame a status process for all those projects, because there are phases of all those projects. Um, we have over $9 million of funding that's come in, and we want to be able to utilize that to improve our community. So um, I'm, I'm very optimistic with CME. We're meeting with them every other Friday. They, they're telling me about the um, applications they're getting in, uh, the survey they're doing. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, I think Main Street, we can get a pretty good recommendation together within four to five weeks. Uh, the other projects are in process. Uh, so we hope to get that on board here pretty quick. Uh, and the, the team of uh, people seem energetic about that. Um, for those who live on the um, south part of town, south part of town, uh, you'll see water in Sylvan Lake at the, in the whole lake, which is good. Uh, that tells us that the flume project worked is a temporary fix. Um, that's a huge project coming up this fall uh, between the outfall pipe with Sylvan Lake. And um, we're gonna have to replace that unit. Uh, that This is a temporary fix that we put in. Uh, hopefully it will last through the, um, uh, through the duration of what we need it. Uh, I'm gonna be meeting with the Avon uh, mayor to talk about sequencing on that, um, on that flume. My, my opinion is we fixed the, 
we put a permanent fix on, which we just fixed first. And then the secondary uh, fix is going to start in October and probably take us through March, which is a huge project. Um, we're estimating between three and four million dollars right now, which is uh, pretty big, pretty big numbers. Um, I'd ask you to check library, uh, check the website for library and recreation activities uh, that are coming up. Uh, I do want to mention and thank DPW, uh, Biagio Capone and um, his team. Uh, one of our pieces of they, they kind of took a shared service action on their own initiative, uh, along with the borough administrator. Our Bobcat, which is one of our bigger pieces of equipment, broke down. Uh, the estimate we got was $12,200. And um, he enlisted some mutual support from um, Belmar. We've helped them on a number of occasions. We went to Belmar and um, they were able to get the Bobcat fixed for us in their shop here at less than $4,000. So, you know, that's an, that's an example of um, some good initiative and, and some cost savings that um, that, that could have really, uh, you know, cost us a few dollars uh, for that piece of equipment. Um, I want to make uh, one other comment about the uh, food pantry. Um, I don't know if people are aware of this, but I'm personally personally heartbroken by this, that um, they announced yesterday that they will close prematurely on May 17th. Um, they had committed to relocating and have been very active in acquiring a new property, which is in process. But unfortunately, the pressure they uh, was applied to them in the interim that created a really untenable situation. Um, my biggest concern, when you think about that enterprise, I've always called that probably the most important enterprise in Bradley Beach. They support about 750 families in about 10 towns around us, including Bradley Beach. Um, not as important, but very important is, um, we just talked about uh, National Volunteer Week. Uh, we've got 175 people that have been committed to and worked in that food pantry that um, were, were, I guess there's a meeting next week uh, that uh, the director's going to have um, to explain what's going on. Uh, but they will close on May 17th. Uh, and it, it, it is a shame, um, the acceleration of this closure. So uh, I don't know all the details of that acceleration, but from the briefings I've gotten, it seemed like there was a process and a plan in place. Uh, it's unfortunate that whatever impatience drove them to this um, happened because uh, I do believe their new site, if they do get that new site, it's gonna take a little bit of time to retrofit. Um, one of the questions I have, and I've gotta do this after the fact with um, the BBBCA relative to those events is, I'm not sure that being first food pickup we we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. We're meeting Friday with um, a number of agencies and um, entities that are in the business of supporting um, people uh, in Monmouth County, and we're gonna try to figure out. A, I, I just tried to broker people to see if there's a way, there's an interim solution between uh, May 17th and when they open. Can we do pop up? Can we utilize something else? So we're gonna we're gonna work on that, but. Uh, that's that's a variable we're going to have to to talk about um, because they may not have a place to put that stuff uh, given where they are. So we'll we'll figure that out though. Uh, that is the end of my report. Um, we'll now go to public comments. Everybody have a public comment? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, William Shook, 150th Avenue, uh, Bradley Beach, and uh, Deputy Coordinator OEM for uh, Bradley Beach. So the reason I'm mentioning that is uh, I received an email yesterday uh, from uh, one of our surrounding towns, uh, Neptune City, and basically it's a resolution that they adopted on April 22nd. Uh, I talked to the VA about it. And uh, like I said, it's short notice, so it couldn't be put on the agenda. But I would like to see it into uh, place into uh, your next uh, meeting's agenda. And that is uh, requesting 
uh, authorization requesting general financial support under the state state's uh, fiscal year 2025 budget for regional flood study. Uh, this is uh, to submit requests to the state of New Jersey for $500,000 uh, to conduct the regional flood. This is actually gonna help the residents at, uh, by Sylvan Lake on Bradley Boulevard, but more it's gonna uh, help the uh, residents at the north end of town by Fletcher Lake. We have to understand our lakes do not just get rainwater, they also get water from other towns through their storm uh, water. Uh, like Fletcher uh, Sylvan Lake, gets it from Neptune City. There's actually a pipe from Neptune City that goes right into uh, Sylvan Lake and it dumps in there and eventually dumps into the ocean. Same thing with uh, what you call, yes, I know, you've seen the typo. typo okay. I was gonna say, if you're gonna uh, adopt it, you wanna <laughs> copy it word for word, just do a spell check because- yeah, I just go on the record and say a resolution like this would <laughs> never <laughs> leave our town. <laughs> typo Let's not copy the typo. <laughs> You guys know me better than that, right? Uh, you all know yeah, me better than that, right? Careful, careful. I used to work at So we, we can, you know, I, I, I mean, do we can do some this thing on top that we can bring us yeah. however. But what I would like to add is uh, they did make a little mistake. We need to send this to uh, uh, to Cologne, Arno. Let's send it to uh, the state senator, Bingo Pal, okay? Let, let's get more people involved in this and let them push the governor to give this uh, $500,000 uh, study. Thank you. Is, is, it time, is, there, is this time sensitive? Not really. Like, <clears throat> it, it's just the sooner we could do it, okay. you know, because yeah. uh, they're doing their budget. So, so could, let's get so we do this in the next well, meeting. Right. There, there's been a lot of activity just to clarify the urgency. Um, Neptune. Um, Mike Basham, I hope I got his name right. Basham. Basham um, has headed up a group. I've sat in a couple of meetings, but yes. OEM has sat in all the meetings. The October um, rain that we had affected the ocean growth side much more because they're lower. Yes. For one and two, I don't think they have the infrastructure that we have below ground. Um, so they've gotten a lot of pressure from their residents to to look at flood mitigation. Um, so they've headed this thing up. We're part of the, you know, I don't know how many, how many towns is it, Mr. Show? Uh, I believe there's four towns involved four towns. in this with Maumee County, OEM. Okay. Oh yeah, it's right here, I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, so um, that's generated a lot of buzz um, and a lot of meetings. There's been two or three meetings and uh, I think this will this should move, but um, you know I can understand that if we were on the receiving side of that, um, I can understand. So, got it. We, we, I think we can get this into the main meeting, but we'll make the appropriate changes. Okay, yeah. thank you. And on another note, uh, there was a uh, meeting that was held at uh, Belmar in reference to Verizon and five G. I mean, a lot of people from this town went over there to support Belmar. It's a shame that they didn't support me back in 2017 when I was arguing this point with the 5G. Uh, the uh, previous mayor, along with the council, allowed Verizon to install the 5G on uh, Bradley, uh, I mean, uh, Ocean Avenue in the 5th, as well as uh, 3rd Avenue on the 100 block. When I was complaining about it, you know, everybody was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. But about two, I'm gonna say two months after my complaint, they put a sign on that telephone pole. It's about eight feet, 10 feet. I said it was six, I was wrong. And okay, says, you're, time. you're on time, I'm sorry. Yeah, so whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, questions? Yes, or comments, I'm sorry. Do some questions, comments. Thanks, Hi, Greg Hesplano, 604 Bradley Boulevard. So my house faces the lake. I have a lot of questions about uh, what was said at and reported at the last council meeting about the $2.4 million grant. So what is the scope of the $2.4 million grant? Um, 
so this is comments, but I'll I'll be happy to send that out to you. It's okay. it's there's a lot of detail. I can send you the document. The actual grant. The grant. Okay. So if I leave my email with Erica, oh, yep. you can send yep. it over. Okay. The next question I have is who's involved in you know the execution or you know determining the outcome, you know, actually working on that. And you know, I'm asking because I'd like to volunteer to work on that group. It's, yeah, you, it's a you need it, some assistance. It's actually a point that I'm gonna put into um a more formal communication, but um, we've had a group working on this for a couple of years. It's called the REPI grant. So there's a, a whole group working on shoreline and improvements. This grant is for other things. We're going to marry the, we're going to get those groups together and figure it out. So that's, it, but it has not been done. That, that's a to do. Do they need help? Uh, they haven't even formed at this point. So I'll make that point to the CM guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what that means. Doing like that, the, the engineer, the engineer who's going to kind of be the point person. And that's a borough engineer. Employee, well, borough engineer. Yeah, he works for us. Okay. okay thank you. Yes. Please, please. Please. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, first off, I find it very interesting that once again, Mayor Cox, you have shut everybody down for the most part tonight. But of course, the gentleman comes up and you had no problem starting to answer his questions. Um, part of the course. Um, I have been asked by someone who is not here tonight to uh, just inquire. Perhaps the council could reconsider why are we only holding one planning and zoning board meeting a month? Um, especially now that you have condensed the two um, teams into one, um, it's causing an excessive wait time. Um, you know, this person happens to be that, you know, they've already reached their 45 day for their plans, only to be told that they can't get on the calendar until um, July. So this is someone who obviously has spent over a million dollars, will spend more than a million dollars building and re renovating their house, but can't do so because they can't get on the calendar. So um, I believe somewhere it was written or it was back in the day that we are entitled to have two meetings a month um, and that the group has chosen not to do one, but that a special meeting can be called for, but isn't always given. So perhaps with all of the, re, uh, re, the construction, reconstruction and building that goes on in town, perhaps you could look to readdress that. And maybe, I mean, if we can have meetings twice a, a month, why can't? Those that are only here to better our community have twice a month and maybe move that along. I'm on the land use board, so I can send it to the secretary. Please talk to that. Yeah, um, I appreciate that. Um, again, someone else asked me to bring up um, since we are focusing on volunteer and you know we are a tight knit community um, and we want to promote that. Um, there was a recent uh, GoFundMe put out on our Facebook page for one of our residents, uh, May Megan Gingerelli. Um, she's on wait list for a liver transplant. She's a single mother, three kids. Um, I applaud everybody that has given graciously and donated, but we're only about halfway there. So if anybody could share that with anybody, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, another point of thanks, um, we'd like to thank actually the um, police department and animal control. Um, we recently had this weekend an incident where um, woke up to a very loud noise on Saturday morning to my dog being attacked by a huge raccoon in my backyard. Um, and he was thinking about me, but he went for my dog instead, otherwise I would have taken him out. Um, but we called we called the police and asked them to inform animal control they did. Um, animal control did get back to us two hours later and said that they had captured one. I don't know if it's the same one or not, but they're sending it out for testing. And of course, you know, we made notification on the Facebook page so everybody would be aware for their own safety and their pets. Um, and our pet was taken in for um, with preventative rabies boosters and antibiotics just in case. So I applaud you, thank you for getting on top of that. Um, really do uh, appreciate that. Um, and lastly, um, earlier I know, um, it's a shame that we're not able to ask questions anymore or you know, for the sake of time, Mayor Fox wants us to just kind of run through this when in fact, the point of a public meeting is just that for us to find out, know, get questions for you guys to know. 
I mean, obviously you guys are all getting together beforehand because it would be informed and that's illegal. So this is the avenue for us to get all the information for you to get the information. So um, it certainly would be nice if the VA and the mayor would perhaps send you a lot of information well in advance. And like I said, it'd be in with a book so that you're well versed before you come here. And then maybe we have more questions um, answered. And quite frankly, I don't know in terms of the DPW contract, if Mr. Farabach seems to be the point of contact, why do we not have him in here giving us a status? Because again, it's so unacceptable that our workers who really carry the load in this town are not being treated. And I believe in the last meeting when we were talking about proposed budgets, and someone asked a question about was the DPW contract included in that, Mayor Fox has said yes, as it's been presented. And we all know that if it was accepted as presented, we wouldn't be waiting 18 months. So we know that if that's what they're using as perhaps part of the budget plan, it's not going to be correct. So again, if that could be done, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Brigitte McGuire, 610 Brindley Ave. Um, okay, I have a few things. I do want to say I'm disappointed about the event fee situation. Um, I do think it needed to be tabled on um, both, both resolutions for both entities. And I want to explain why I believe so. Um, the fact that tourism may have been charged, and I know that seems we're not sure, but if that's the case, that's a huge issue that we have uh, our town event department being charged for events and we're waiving fees for private entities. Um, I don't believe the BBBCA needed to pay $2,500 for each event. Absolutely not. It's a nonprofit company. Um, I do think we needed to table it so that we could come up with an agreed amount that would cover all those events. Um, I don't know if the owner of the farm market was contacted, but I think it is a huge disrespect to have removed the waived fee without him knowing and pass that. And now suddenly it's not waived. And I don't know that he knew about that. And as a business owner, that would piss me off greatly. Um, I do think he needs to pay for each event, but I, I just don't think that should have been done without him being informed. Um, I do wanna thank the council for voting down the introduction of the budget. I, like I said earlier, I'm going to continue repeating and stressing the need for forensic investigation into our fine and in this town. I really, really hope we can continue voting this down so that the DCA can step in. I think it's really necessary. Um, I do want to remind everyone that I had Oprah the um, federal funding we got through the American Rescue Plan, the COVID money for 2021 and 2022, 140. Four hundred thirty-four thousand dollars, and when I when I asked, I was given that there were no responsive records. I got that same answer about three times. Then, after three times of no responsive records, I was given in Edmonds' list of that amount of money, sort of just being tossed around into accounts with still no bank account was deposited into, which I had asked for, and no allocations of where that money was was allocated. No information on that. So I do want to put that on record once again. Um, let's see. After the, oh, the um, tax levy versus municipal increase. So Mayor Fox, I, I don't understand the tax levy so much versus the learning I've tried, to, everything I've tried to learn about municipal tax increase. And I know in your newsletters, you mentioned the tax levy. So can you can you give me the difference of those two for a better understanding? Yeah, I think what I put in my newsletter is our municipal levy is what we control. There's other elements of tax that to give people a sense of what the total tax is going to be. That's what I lay out. And it's an estimate. So I know the municipal tax money is 
like our money that we control and spend. So is the tax levy the same thing? Why don't I write out a couple paragraphs for you off of the summary that I do? Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Um, I just, I'm, I would appreciate that just because I went back to last year's newsletter as well in the same time of year of the budget. And it had like the lower percentage rate for the tax levy. And then by the time we passed the budget, we were at the 13.2% increase in municipal tax. So, so you, that's why I just wanted to know the difference. Yeah, you're, you're not then understanding. The only big change in the newsletter was that the county hit us with a lot more tax last year than they had in the prior three years. So I'll explain that in that paragraph. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Yes. Seeing another ocean bar coming in, um, Mr. Weber, school gets out at 310. So I share that with you. Sure. Uh, this meeting got off to a pretty embarrassing and repulsive start. And if you don't want to hear what we have to say, really. Um, that being said, also, I find it offensive that Passover was brought up and Ramadan was not brought up. Which is one of the most religious holidays for the people that follow that religion. But you know, I it's not such a somebody that was skipped over last month. Um, prior to a budget, I would like to see, because I always say to you, we need to legislate, we need to change the ordinance on the number of personnel in the police department, and we need to change the ordinance. <laughs> On the percentage of salaries taken from the beach and civil utilities. I don't see how you can continue with the budget without doing that. And I do realize that the utilities do make it so that we, we the taxpayers, pay less. However, I would really like to prefer to have truth and transparency. Um, I would, well, I don't ask questions, but I think the public would like to know when the QPA current contract is up. I don't think it should be renewed. Um, we had a presentation and I tried to find it online, but you know, finding something on that website is, you know, when you find something to teach. Um, the rec center came in and made a presentation and it said, um, I think the phrasing is revenue and expenses, but we see no breakdowns. How many months have I been asking for breakdowns on what comes in and what goes out and what's it spent on? So I'm going to look at those expenses. And I can tell you that that was not 100% expenses of running the recreation department, which then would also bring me to tourism, which is under our umbrella of municipality. But the BBCA, as I've said before, is 501c6. So therefore, it should not be treated the same as a fire department, police department, you know. It's the same thing, you know, had we not defunded the Chamber of Commerce, that's what we would have. And it's the same kind of thing. They should not receive any sort of special treatment um, since they're not under our umbrella. Um, and we could save money once again at the second floor of the police department facing uh, Main Street. And now their windows open. I see them open almost every morning on my way to work. I don't get it. And this is before we had a little bit of moon weather. Um, I don't understand why, once again, I have opened something and we don't have any records on some bills. They were bills that we did not approve for payment and we no longer have records for time on them. So like, where'd they go? You know, what happens to your bills when you don't pay them? Where'd they go? We don't seem to have information. And then that would bring me to the last meeting we had when a tenant spoke about her personal landlord issues during the consent agenda part of the meeting. Now, I've been saying since December 15th, at this point in the meeting, that I have a landlord issue. And that has been ignored. 
by this entity, as well as by the code department. So I wrote a letter. I have no answer. So don't brush us off and think that we believe you're going to give us appropriate responses. We have the right to know and have answers for whatever it is, because you serve at our pleasure. And I want to thank Mr. Weber and Ms. Mahoney for your votes this evening, many of which I didn't agree with. But they did have well thought out and um, professionally stated answers. And that um, just got the bar in making us the community that we used to be. Um, the website, how many times do I have to say, you need to do something about this. Now we've got every department doing their own. So we've got different fonts, different styles. The point was consistency, which would tie into a little bit of your branding, but not totally. But it's beyond my realm of comprehension why we're so dysfunctional, well, I don't know why, um, but why we're allowed to be so dysfunctional, why employees are allowed to be that way. And yes, I can say it because it's freedom of speech in America. And that quite honestly, no endorsement of anyone in particular trumps everything else. Thank you. So. Yeah, oh, was that a one? Um, yeah, just a comment on Ms. Castellano. That that was a mistake on our part at the last meeting. She got up and after being into it for two minutes, I wasn't going to um, have her sit down and it took a little time and I apologize, but um, we said just... Uh, we don't get the same courtesy to where the vote is. Uh, thank you. Linda yes. W, 312 Brindley Avenue. I just have a question for Greg. Okay. About the ordinance uh, 2024 benefits. Does 25 percent of the population have to vote for that? The majority of the population has to vote for it. So, if the 25 percent, I don't know what the voting population is. I would say, say for that. Well, it depends on if you show up because vote not voting is a choice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the 25 percent I was referring to is the number of people that have to sign a petition in order to get that on the ballot. So out of the voters, how many people have to vote for it? What? Over a thousand, I believe, in this town. I'm just asking. Would have to sign the petition. That question- Well, that's about signing. Okay. Let's talk about when you vote. 51, 50 percent plus one. Okay. That's of the people that show up. That's what that's- Yeah, people. there's no, there's no- Oh, there's no, there's no, there's no minimum quorum that shows up for the that's election. Cool, yeah. Just held at a regular municipal general election. People that show up, they can choose not to vote in the question too. It's their choice. Well, yes, but I was just wondering if it was like percentage of the town. Asking. No, that only applies to signing the petition. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, somebody's on the board. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just getting the person on the board. Who's the person on the board? Molly Conger. Is that Conger? You two questions. Yes. Hi, City Council. Yes, I'm curious if this was the public comment. Yes. Or did I, did I, is it the public comment? Yes, can you identify who you are and your address? Please state your name and address. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Molly. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Molly Conger and I live, I live on 614 North 14th Street. Not here, not here. Uh, I was curious if this was the public comment. Are you on Bradley Beach? What? You can just tell us what town that's I'm sorry, in. what? Are you in Bradley Beach? Yes, yes, I'm in Bradley Beach. We don't have a North 14th Street. What street are you on in Bradley Beach? Oh, sorry, sorry. Did I say 14th? I meant, I meant 12th, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Sorry, just whatever, man. Is, is this sorry. public comment? Yes, what is your comment, please? Was well, it public comment or is it on the agenda item? It's public comments. Oh, okay. Hi. So I was just curious, basically, like I see a lot of anti-white propaganda pushed in the media. And I mean, I think it's great that we celebrate so many different cultures and hey, Michelle, you know, ethnicity. Michelle, Michelle. And like Freedom of speech. Oh, no, that's freedom of speech. That? Do that. It's freedom of speech. Yes. First Amendment. Why are you? Why are you? No, keep well, going. Yeah, I have keep a going. First Amendment. That's kind of rude. That's kind of rude.
Okay. Okay. Well, I'm curious. Like, oh, can we have like a white history month? I'm curious. Like, white people. I would just like to say some awesome things that white people have done. Like, as a as a white transgender Israeli, it feels like white people have been very very prejudiced against. And like, I'm I'm also Jewish, and so we get a lot out of hate too and like i think that we should you know if we have a jewish heritage month i don't see why we can't have a white history month or even a year i mean white people founded our country i mean white people you know freed the slaves i mean oh my gosh white people have done so much i mean we've built roads i mean architecture I mean, most of the modern architecture was designed by white people i mean we have the phone that you use i mean the beautiful building that this council is in i mean it was, it was created by white people. Like, it's just very disheartening to hear that we've done so much awful stuff where some of it isn't fully accurate either. But at the same time, like, I, we've done so much great stuff. I don't feel like we celebrate white people enough. I think, you know, I see little girls and they say how much they hate being white, how they wish they were, you know, black or brown or, you know, pink or whatever color. And they don't like, like being white. I think we should have more people that are proud to be white. You know, I think we should have white pride. Like, where's a white pride? Like, we have gay pride. We have, like, black pride. We have Asian pride. Like, where's white pride? If you were to say white pride, everyone would say you're racist. I don't think that that's very fair or accurate at all. Okay. So that's my you. comment. Thank you, counsel. Okay. Paul, Nishankin, Kathy, Kathy, Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm trying to start my video up. There we go. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for the condolences. I, I really appreciate it. And I really like to call out again to our police department, who I think are just terrific and handle situations like this in an extremely sensitive and effective manner. Um, uh, I salute them. Um, a separate issue. Um, Al Gubitosi would have brought this up if he was at the meeting. The Fallen Heroes Fund, which we are co-sponsoring as a historical society uh, with the borough, um, really is in need of funds. Um, I think their goal was $12,000. Um, they hope to accomplish everything by Memorial Day. I don't know how they will unless somebody comes forward and donates. Small or large donations are accepted. Um, by check to Al um, online through the Historical Society website, bbhistory.org. When you go to the website in the front page, you'll see a link to the Fallen Heroes Fund, and you can fill out that form and make a donation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Uh, okay, and anybody else? Yes. Like Flynn, 604th Avenue. In the 2022 audit, there were 16 total 16 internal control and compliance matters. One of them was considered a material weakness. Eight of these matters were the same issues mentioned in the 2021 audit report. Um, found a website named ECODE 360. And on there, it states the Municipal Clerk Association of New Jersey, Chapter 10 Local Budget and Fiscal Affairs. Subsection 1082 uh, Corrective Action Plans, dated 7 8, 1992. All local units, including municipalities, counties, and fire districts and authorities operating under the Local Public Authorities Fiscal Control Act, must now prepare and submit a corrective action plan as part of their annual audit process. The corrective action plan shall be prepared in accordance with the OMB circulars and this notice. Plans are to be submitted to the division and placed on file with the clerk or secretary of the local unit 60 days from the day of the audit received by the governing body. This plan shall cover all findings and recommendations in the audit report, including state, federal, and general findings, as well as the status of all prior year findings and recommendations. It should be prepared by the chief financial officer of the local unit with assistance from other officials affected by the audit recommendations and approved by the governing body of a local unit. Each corrective action shall include the following. Description of the deficiency. Analysis as to why the deficiency occurred. Descriptions of procedures to be used to correct the deficiency or reason why the finding will not be corrected. Expected date 
of implementation, which is required to be no later than six months after the date of the order report. Corrective action plans are to be referenced in the synopsis of the order report that is published. On November 22nd, 2022, and March 27th, 2024, there were two resolutions passed which our governing body certified the annual audits for 21 and 22. I've gone through all the resolutions from 2022 through 2024, and I don't see a resolution accepting the corrective plan. For, for, uh, to clarify, for this year? For 21 and 22. For 21 and 22. Correct. Uh, okay. I recently found an example, one from West Cape May for their 2021 audit. And this resolution followed right after the resolution that certified their annual audit. Since our former government um, may be different than West Cape May, are we exempt from this process of preparing and submitting corrective action plans as part of the annual audit process, or did I just miss the approved resolution from our website? No, the 2022's uh, corrective action plan is completed yet. That's and, being done. And what about 2020? I'll have to follow up on 2020, because I, I know that we did a corrective action plan. Thank you. Also, doing my research, I found annual audits from different municipalities' libraries. For ours, I didn't find one on the borough's website or the library's website. I also couldn't find anything on the state level. I was surprised that I couldn't find anything since there was a recent RFP from the library requesting audit services for 2024. Many of the meeting agendas mentioned financial reports comparing budgets and actual results. I called the State Library of New Jersey and left a message for Robert Keith, who is the Director of Library Law, State Aid and Statistics, and left him a voicemail asking where I could find a copy of the most recent audit or was I library exempt from having to do one? He called me back and told me that the library wasn't exempt from doing them. He was surprised to find out that one hadn't been done, excuse me, performed for several years. Uh, that's not that's not correct. It's not. It's okay. Not. So if he's did I, so um is there any way to get copies of those reports? Yeah, the library director has we reviewed um last year's I think two meetings ago. Yeah she's on that she has so you also gave, gave, us, gave you the wrong information. You got wrong information. Okay. That's correct. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Good. Thank you. Yes. For an Egbert, 404 and a half, Brindley Avenue. Um, this gentleman just hit on exactly what I haven't been able to quite get out of my mind for um, since I heard about the 2022 audit. And that was findings findings at the very end of the audit that anybody can find on our website and it cites things like a lack of accurate and timely maintenance of the general ledger to prevent and detect um, and correct misstatements or mistakes and and it go, you know it goes on with several recommendations and what they say could be the effect of our deficiencies there and this is the first that I've learned that there's a corrective report. I mean, that was the kind of information that I planned to stand up and ask. And I'm wondering if that is a public document and if our council has been involved in, in looking that over. And um, if we could have any insurance, uh, assurances that we know with accuracy and you know what is coming in, what is going out, if goods that are paid for are received, you know, I don't know how we can go forward. You know, we talk a lot about the budget, but if we have no internal controls or we can't rely on our internal controls, I want to know how to fix that. You know, it, it seems to me, you know, absolutely fundamental. And um, that major concern, number one, second major concern is having DPW and other wonderful um, employees of our borough working without a contract for how long? When is it 20 months or pardon? I think it's probably 15 or 16 at this point. 15 or 16 months. months. Okay. And that once a contract settled, we're gonna owe back money to them too, aren't we? Yep. Right. And if we don't know, you know, I'd say, you know, let's get a contract to these people principally because they deserve to be paid and deserve to be, I don't think we can pay them what they're worth, quite frankly but as close as we can. And we also need that information to have accurate budget projections. So um, the last thing I'd like to say is part of the budget conversation that I heard last time I was here involved um, elimination of positions through attrition. 
And I think I heard mention the possibility of two of them being in the DPW. And I don't know if it's been shared with our council at all or with anyone, what positions at what salary levels we're, you know, we're planning because really, I mean, the details of this budget is the plan of how our government's gonna operate for the next year. It's not just numbers or arguing about numbers. It, it's, it's how we're gonna operate as a town. And, and I'm concerned about balancing the budget in this way, which is really without the details. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion to um, close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.